In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Welcome. Special welcome to our visitors and guests. Tomorrow, July 4th, our nation will celebrate its 247th anniversary of its independence. Government and businesses closed to observe the holiday, and since it occurs in the middle of the summer, many people go on a trip out of town. When it occurs on or near the weekend, it's probably one of the most carefree times of the whole year. It's not a time to worry. And this is one of the main messages of today's gospel reading from the third Sunday of Matthew, chapter 6, in which Jesus says simply, do not worry about your life. And this is an import, important message for all of us to remember because despite the holiday weekend, there's a lot of worrying going on right now. Skyrocketing gas prices, high inflation, the war in Ukraine, crime in our neighborhoods, and the list goes on. Are not these things stuff we should be worried about? Perhaps. The prelude of Jesus' command to not worry begins with him saying, no one can serve two masters, for either he or she will hate the one and love the other, or he or she will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And he explains why we try to serve mammon and mammon are earthly goods. He tries to explain this, why we do this. And these things, these earthly goods have a materialistic character. We worry about mammon because we worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, and what we're going to wear. Yet, I'm willing to assert that most if not all of us, are not worth worrying whether or not, what, we're not worrying really about what we're going to eat or what we're going to drink or what we're going to wear. My guess is that we're probably worrying about maintaining or bettering our current lifestyle. In other words, our financial worries are tied to the commitments we made to acquire the nice things that we have the big homes, the second homes, the fancy cars. And we see these types of worries enter into our parish community as well. A lot of anxiety builds up around our perceived ability to meet our commitments in having a house of worship, in carrying out our mission to preach and teach and heal. Many of us tense up when we receive a communication from the church seeking our financial support. Yet Jesus tells us not to worry. He compares us to the birds of the air who neither sow nor reap nor store their food. He compares us to the lilies or flowers of the field who do not work at all to grow in their beauty. Jesus reminds us that God feeds the birds and he makes the grass grow. Jesus also reminds us that we are more valuable than them in God's eyes and that God knows what we need. Thus, if he takes care of them, he will certainly take care of us. Don't worry. <coughs> not only does Jesus tell us not to worry, he gives us instructions on how to do this. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you meaning all 
the materialistic things that God already knows that you need. The simple solution to avoid worry is to put God and put his commandments first. Then food, then drink, then clothing, and whatever else we need naturally follows. The implicit message here is that God knows best what and how much we need at any particular time of our life. And the only way that we will come to know what God knows is to seek him out and to follow his commands. Problems happen when we forget to seek God, when we forget about his commandments, and we try to determine on our own what and how much we need. And if we do this, then we are playing God. And since, however, we are not God, when we try and do this, we usually make a mess of things. Our salvation is at stake. In the Orthro service that preceded the liturgy this morning, we read the third Aeothinon, or morning gospel reading. It's from Mark 16. And in that passage, Jesus said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he or she who does not believe will be condemned. Now, this doesn't mean that God's waiting to punish those who do not believe. What it does mean is that those who do not believe in God usually make decisions, bad decisions, and the negative consequences of those poor decisions are self-condemning. And when we say we believe in God, it has to not just be with our mouth, with our words, it has to be with our actions. What does it mean to seek God and his righteousness? Today's gospel passage is preceded by three sections that instruct us how to give alms, how to pray, and how to fast. And during the church year, we typically read these passages right before the beginning of Great and Holy Lent. And reading them in their original order illuminates the path to avoiding worry. God's kingdom essentially involves giving sacrificially to others, talking with and listening to God, and number three, abstaining from certain foods and certain sins. Regarding prayer, St. Paul reinforces his Jesus teaching with his eloquent words that we hear on Palm Sunday every year in Philippians chapter 4, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We also pray for this during the divine liturgy in the petition for our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and distress. Sometimes that is translated as need or want. We pray for this as well in the true Bikim when we sing, let us lay aside all the cares of this life. One could say that prayer is the opposite of worry. In many 12-step groups, the serenity prayer by Reinhold Niebuhr is commonly taught and prayed. Many of you may know it. It says, God grant me the serenity, serenity meaning peace, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. In fact, I would say that whenever we find ourselves worrying about stuff, meaning material stuff, and getting anxious, this is a sign and a signal to start praying. 
And what would be some common sim symptoms of worry and anxiety? A short list could include persistent and invading thoughts, feeling afraid, a sense of loss of control, irritability, impatience. And if we don't catch them at that level, then they can go on to become chronic worry and anxiety that even can manifest itself in physical symptoms, often mimicking many other illnesses like a headache or a migraine, indigestion, abdominal pain. The antidote to all these is prayer. And by praying, we are putting these problems in God's hands and letting him worry about them. And the same is true of our parish community. When we sense that people are getting worried and anxious, we shouldn't play up those fears. Rather, we should seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness through continued charity, intensified worship and fasting. And in other words, we do not contract our core mission of preaching, teaching, and healing. Neither do we come late or skip liturgy, spending an inordinate time talking about parish problems, whether it be in the narthex or down in the fellowship hall or on the phone. We don't call and talk and complain and criticize because that spreads anxiety instead of spreading peace, instead of spreading hope. In addition, when circumstances are justifiably stressful, we do not re relax our fasting regimen. Rather, the scriptures are replete with examples of stricter fasting and repentance and confession in times of trouble. My brothers and sisters, we know that we should not worry. We shouldn't worry about yesterday because it's already come and gone. There's nothing we can do about it. In the last verse of Matthew chapter 6 which is not read today, but comes right after today's gospel passage, we hear Jesus say, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own things. Sufficient for the day, meaning today is its own trouble. Someone once said that worry is the advance interest we pay on troubles that seldom come. When Jesus says, don't worry, he's saying, let me worry about it because I can probably do something about it. And one man who followed Jesus' advice said that he felt much better when he, when he resigned his position as general manager of the universe. That's a joke. We cannot serve two masters. If we find ourselves frequently worrying and anxious, it's probably because we are serving mammon and not serving God. So let us serve God. Let us seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Let us pray for his peace, especially when we cannot change things. And that's usually most of the time. Let us pray for courage to roll up our sleeves and work for the change that we can accomplish. And most of all, let us give alms. Let us pray. Let us fast so that God will grant us wisdom and discernment to know what we can change and what we cannot change. Don't worry. Amen.